a lot of people are using Fusion 360 for modeling so they can make a 3D model, export it in SDL and 3D print it or whatever. But it also has some simulators and it'll do various stress tests. So the simplest example I could think of was just a vibrating guitar string. Now a guitar string is just a piece of steel that's pulled to a particular tension and its length is set by the scale length of the guitar, that's the distance between the nut and the bridge. And you impart kinetic energy by plucking that string, which sends a shock pulse up and down. It also causes it to vibrate, so it'll resonate at its natural frequency, which is whatever you have it tuned to. So let's go ahead and see how close we can model a string and check out what kind of results we get. So we're gonna be using a regular old Fender 25 and a half inch scale length, just cause it's pretty standard. And we're gonna model the high E string. That's E on the fourth octave. So it says right here, the type of steel that they use is plain steel. It's a, it's a high carbon steel. I'm gonna assume it's uh, like piano wire or something like that. I know that's uh, 1080 grade. And then from the DiMarzio string calculator, I can see that we're gonna be using 16.22 pounds of tension and we're gonna use 0 0.01 inch diameter or a 10 as guitar players call it. We're gonna switch our 10 inch diameter metric so you multiply it by 25.4 and we get 0.254 millimeters. And then I know we're gonna need radius for the program. So we're gonna divide that by two and get 0.127. Cool, so let's jump into our modeling program. I could do the modeling in Fusion 360, but it's a pain in my butt. So I'm just gonna do it in this one and then pop it over. I know that's kind of silly, but I'm a direct solid modeling guy and you have to jump through too many hoops to do that properly with Fusion 360. Anyway. So we're just gonna make a cylinder and the diameter or the radius is gonna be 0.127. And then our length is gonna be 647.7, which is our metric equivalent of 25.5. And we're gonna export that as a SAT file. First thing we have to do is set the material. So we're just gonna right click anywhere, go to physical material and then go to our metals library and scroll down and hope they have a steel that'll work for us. Here's our carbon grades. So we have three grades, three grades of 1080. I don't know what QT stands for, something temper I would assume. 108421 Aust, I guess Austinite. That's the crystal that forms as steel hardens. So larger crystals, harder steel. I'm just going to pick that one, because why not, and then drag it over to our string. So now that we have all that, we're going to go down to simulation, pick modal frequencies. Now we have to anchor the ends of our string, so we're going to add a constraint, and then just click this. Oopsies. Click that surface and that's going to anchor it in XYZ. If you're confused about the directions, just look at XYZ up there. And zoom out and go to our other side, which is way over here. All right, we're going to add another constraint. We're going to constrain this, but not in the Z direction because we're going to have, because we're going to have tension pulling in that direction. It'll throw a warning and do that automatically for you, but it's good practice to just do it. Click OK. Now we want to make a load. So our load is going to be the same face here. And notice that it's pulling in. So we just want to click flip direction. It'll flip it out like that. And then pounds of force, we already said, was 16.22. Click OK. And then we can go up to manage, do our settings here, and say how many modes you're interested in. And it's going to show you modes in a couple different directions. Like it'll show you modes in X and it'll show you modes in Y. So if you pick like six modes, it's really just gonna show you three because X and a Y direction are basically gonna be exactly the same frequency, unless you've put gravity as a constraint, which we didn't. So I'll just pick six. I'm not gonna worry about the frequency range. We're gonna have to compute preloaded modes because we put a uh, load constraint on that and then go up here and click solve. This is where it screams at you about the constraint. Don't worry about that. Just let it do it at once and then hit solve. It's gonna take that file, upload it to the cloud. It's gonna solve it there and send it back. You can choose to solve it locally on your computer if you'd rather, or if you don't have internet connection, but it's gonna be a lot slower.
Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, Fusion 360 barfed while it was trying to run this simulation. So in case it was because the string was so thin, I switched everything to a G string. Because sometimes with the really thin stuff, Fusion 360 just isn't very good. Looks like it did it. Now, technically, if everything was correct, at those tensions, our G string, which I made a 20, you know, 0.02 inches, should have a natural resonance frequency around 196 hertz. As you can see on the screen down here, mode one is listed at 171.8 hertz. That means the particular grade of steel that we use that they had in their library isn't exactly what corresponds to reality land, but it's pretty impressive that it got that close actually. I might try simulating it again with different grades of steel and see if that affects the frequency at all. So that's our first mode. As you would expect, the maximum excursion point is gonna be right in the middle of the string at the 12th fret. We can check out our other modes. Like I said, these are gonna be doubled up because it's just one direction, the other direction. Here's our second mode. So you see we have two nodes there and so on and so forth as we add more harmonics as we move up. If you wanna see it wiggle around, we can just go up to here to animate, click two way, make sure it's fastest, pick your number of steps, 10 is fine, then click animate and you can watch it wiggle. So there you go. If you're one of my guys that follows for 3D printing, don't worry, I got a lot of videos coming up for that. I've got designing and building a miniature geared extruder. I have some stepper tests. I have many more driver tests, as well as the rest of the results from my torque test. So make sure to stay tuned if you're interested in that kind of stuff. See you in the next video. And until then, get out there and make something awesome.